when we think about the art of the swoon, we tend to think of images like this one from Bridgerton. Cressida faints gracefully into the prince's arms. Swoons show gender norms in action, don't they? The weak woman is overcome, but the heroic man rescues her. But what if I told you that swooning wasn't always considered feminine? In medieval romance, it's often the bravest knights who pass out. Sometimes that's because of battle wounds, but often they're just overwhelmed with love. For them, fainting isn't feminizing. It's part of a masculine ideal which glorifies fighting and feeling intensely. So what changed? And why does it matter? My research explores fainting in English plays staged from around the time Shakespeare started writing in the 1580s to the theatre closure in 1642. Although these audiences continued to enjoy displays of male passion, the social norms increasingly required them to control their bodies and emotions. We see this tension in the way they stage faints. So that when romantic heroes swoon, playwrights often go to great lengths to ensure they aren't emasculated. Shakespeare's Orlando at the top of the slide has just fought a snake and a lioness. Shakespeare excuses this moment of weakness by pairing it with multiple moments of strength. Feints can be comic, and they can also be associated with poor leadership. So my analysis shows that male feints are acceptable in some circumstances, but not others. By exploring male and female examples, I offer new insights into the period's anxieties about who is allowed or expected to show weakness. And we can use these ideas to explore our own gender anxieties too. Because it isn't only Bridgerton ladies that swoon, and the fact we think of them reflects our perceptions of bodily and emotional vulnerability, especially in men. This even affects Harry Potter, who feels ashamed that he faints after a genuinely traumatic dementia attack. By exploring the art of the swoon, we realise that the ways we inhabit our bodies and emotions are shaped by social narratives of how we think we should be. And perhaps we can use this knowledge to change our gender expectations, waking up to ideas that are as diverse and dynamic as we are. Thank you.